Hello everybody and welcome to another uncanny episode of History of the Marvel Universe. Hey, if you enjoy videos like this and want to see more, please consider showing your support by liking and subscribing. You can also contribute directly via Patreon and vote in monthly polls for only $1 per month. Uh, this week's story is about a boy named Robert Louis Drake, or simply Bobby. Born in Fort Washington on Long Island, New York, he was the son of William Robert Drake and his wife Madeline. Bobby had a difficult relationship with his conservative father, who often had little patience for his son's idealism. At one point during his childhood, after showing his father sand castles that he'd built, he told him that he wouldn't get anywhere in life by dreaming. Bobby was also born with a mutant X gene that caused superhuman powers to naturally develop. In his case, he first began displaying signs of this in his early teens when his body temperature was constantly low. Initially, even Bobby didn't realize what was happening and he could simply do things like keep snow frozen in his hands. Soon, he began freezing the moisture in the air to create ice and used his powers to play mischievous pranks. Then one summer, while swimming in the pool, he accidentally froze all of the water around himself. Having seen talk of mutants on the news, his parents realized what he was, and Bobby hid his true nature from everyone else. One of the few to know his secret was a local pastor who encouraged Bobby to continue praying, hoping it would go away. Even though using his powers felt like the right thing to do, Bobby told the pastor he would try harder not to give in to temptation. However, he continued to practice in secret with ambient moisture, providing him nearly a limitless supply of ice. He even learned to coat himself in a frigid layer of snow, thus effectively becoming an Iceman, although this moniker would eventually become more literal. We'll touch on that later, but in the meantime, he trained in the forest near his Long Island home, darting through the trees on mid-air bridges that he created as he slid across them. While keeping his real self a secret, he also began dating a girl named Judy Herman. One night after seeing West Side Story yet again, the couple were accosted by a group of teenage thugs. Led by a bully named Rocky Beasley, the teens attacked, saying that they'd show Judy a real man. In order to save the girl, Bobby used his mutant power, completely freezing Beasley in place. But rather than grateful, Judy was terrified of Bobby's abilities. In a time of rising anti-mutant sentiment, it didn't take long for the news about the Drake boy to spread. Bobby rushed home to tell his parents what had happened and the family started preparing to flee. They were too late, however, and a lynch mob of angry townsfolk soon arrived on their doorstep. The mob forced their way into the house, but Bobby held back, not wanting to seriously injure anyone. Ultimately, he was turned over to the local sheriff and taken into protective custody. The bigoted crowd gathered outside of the Nassau County Jail, wanting a more permanent solution to the mutant problem. But then Bobby's cell was broken into by a strangely garbed teenage boy with a red visor. This was, of course, the first X-Man, Cyclops, but Bobby didn't trust him and refused to go with him. Cyclops attempted to force the issue, leading to a fight between the two boys. They had no choice but to work together after being attacked by the mob who wanted to hang them both. Thankfully, they were able to escape with some psychic help from Cyclops' mentor, Professor Xavier. With his vast telepathic powers, Xavier made the whole town forget about Bobby's mutant powers, including his parents. Following this, Bobby agreed to enroll in Xavier's school where he could learn and train alongside other mutants. And so Iceman became the school's second student and the second X-Man. After Iceman and Cyclops recruited two more members, Beast and Angel, Xavier's protege, Jean Grey, joined the team as Marvel Girl, completing the original five X-Men. Funnily enough, Bobby was the only one of the boys not to immediately try flirting with her. As the youngest of the group, Bobby often played the role of the class clown. 
but he still pulled his weight and his ice powers were invaluable in the field. He also had occasional adventures apart from the X-Men, at one point battling pirates alongside the Human Torch of the Fantastic Four. In addition to learning to use his powers, Bobby also received a formal education from Xavier's school and graduated alongside his classmates despite his younger age. Among the X-Men, Bobby developed a close friendship with his intellectual teammate Hank McCoy, the Beast, and the two frequented a Greenwich Village coffee shop that featured live jazz performances and poetry readings. It was there that Bobby met a waitress named Zelda Kurtzberg, who he began flirting with. One day while heading to the coffee shop, Hank and Bobby saw a young boy had climbed up onto a water tower and couldn't get down. Risking his secret identity, Hank climbed up the building without his costume to rescue the child. But with anti-mutant hysteria higher than ever before, an angry mob gathered to attack the two mutants. They both managed to escape without being recognized, but Bobby was shaken up and Hank was ready to leave the team. But before he did, the X-Men were confronted by a visitor from the future, an older and furrier Hank McCoy. It seems that in the future, Cyclops had started down a dark path, and so the older Beast wanted the younger X-Men to help set things right. They decided to return with him to his time, but meeting himself turned out to be a surreal experience for both Bobbies. While staying there, the young mutants continued their training under the future X-Man, Kitty Pride. And so things continued to be awkward for Bobby when he saw his older self making out with his new teacher. He and the X-Men also had many adventures during this time, encountering a version of himself from even further in the future during the Battle of the Atom, meeting and fighting alongside other heroes like the Guardians of the Galaxy, and learning to better control his powers while battling villains like the Mole Man. However, the biggest revelation for Bobby came after Kitty Pride left to spend time in space with Star-Lord. Following this, they were looked after by a woman named Magic whose, and I quote, unbelievable hotness was saluted by Iceman. After that display, Gene pulled Bobby aside to ask him why he always does stuff like that. When he questioned what she meant, Jean flatly told him that she knew that he was gay. Initially, he didn't want to accept this himself, even rationalizing that he couldn't be gay because his older self wasn't. However, when confronted with the notion head-on, Bobby was forced to admit that this was a part of himself that he'd been suppressing. And one advantage to being pulled into the future, at least, was that people were generally more accepting of gay relationships than they were in the time that they came from. But the question of Bobby's older self still remained, and so he and Gene went to confront him. Ultimately, the older Bobby admitted that he'd put so much time and energy into his life as a mutant and as an X-Man that he just wanted there to be some part of his life that he wasn't persecuted for. So he put it away and ignored it and tried for years to live as if he were straight, hoping that he actually was. Inspired by his younger self, the older Bobby decided that he would also be honest with himself and come out, beginning a new chapter in his life. Young Bobby lived in the future as a gay X-Man and started dating an inhuman boy named Romeo during a time of increasing animosity between their two species. However, Bobby's heroic duties started keeping them apart and Romeo eventually stopped responding to his messages. He confided in his older self, but this led to an even more challenging situation. He agreed to join future Bobby in having dinner with their parents. But it seems that the Drakes wanted to take in the young Bobby as a second chance to, quote, raise him right. Naturally, neither Bobby was going to let this happen, and the younger one stood up for himself before they both left. Now, the original X-Men had plenty more adventures in the future, but it eventually became clear that they needed to return to the past to preserve the timeline. This was particularly difficult for Bobby, who knew that he would have to go back into the closet if he was going to live the life that he was destined to live. 
However, the older Bobby reassured him that his coming forward in time and having the strength to come out in the first place is what allowed him to do the same, and that no matter what else happened, the younger Bobby would eventually become the older one, and so he knew that he would find his way back to that place again. That was something that nobody could take away from them. After the two Ice Men embraced, Bobby joined the other four original X-Men in returning to the exact point in time that they'd left from. Their memories of the future were suppressed so the timeline wouldn't be altered, and things played out from there as destiny demanded. Back to hiding his true self, Bobby began seeing Zelda Kurtzberg regularly while Hank dated her best friend, Vera Kandor. During this time, Bobby celebrated his 18th birthday at the Coffee A Go Go, but he eventually ghosted Zelda, focusing more on his duties as an X-Man. He also tried to romance the magnetic mutant Polaris, but she was more drawn towards Cyclops' brother, Havoc. This wasn't helped when Polaris was accidentally hit by an errant chunk of ice during a confrontation between Havoc and Iceman. Bobby briefly left the team and crashed on Zelda's couch, but she wasn't thrilled about the fact that he hadn't called her in weeks. He ultimately rejoined the team for several more adventures, but things would change again when he and most of the team were captured by the living island Krakoa. Cyclops escaped and put together a new group of X-Men to rescue them, which was when Wolverine, Storm, and several others joined. Following this, Iceman took the opportunity to leave the team more formally and attend college. After securing a scholarship with UCLA, he moved out west with Angel to continue his education. But while there, the two former X-Men were caught in a conflict involving the Olympian gods, and fought alongside Hercules, Black Widow, and Ghost Rider to form the Champions of Los Angeles. He attempted to romance the Russian hero Dark Star, but of course this didn't work out either. Following the dissolution of the champions, Bobby moved back to the East Coast to study accounting full-time. Despite his attempts to retire from superheroics, he again aided the X-Men to save a group of their loved ones who were held captive by the assassin Arcade. And at some point in the intervening years since he attended Xavier's school, Bobby told his parents the truth about his mutant powers and how Xavier had erased their memories of them. During a subsequent summer vacation, he visited the Beast, who'd become involved with the loose-knit superhero team, the Defenders. Soon after that, Iceman, Beast, and Angel formed a new Defenders team that was more organized. During this time, he made romantic approaches towards the team's psychic member, Moon Dragon. But this was because she was mentally manipulating the men in the group, hoping one of them could help remove a band that Odin had placed on her head to limit her powers. Later, he developed feelings for Cloud, whose powers allowed her to switch back and forth between genders. Cloud was attracted to both Iceman and Moondragon, but her transformations into male form made Bobby uncomfortable. At this point, he'd spent years of his life refusing to accept his own homosexuality, and it seems that he wasn't willing to face that side of himself. In either case, Cloud turned out to be a sentient nebula who was sent to Earth by a cosmic cube to recruit help in a conflict against the Star Thief. Once that threat had passed, Cloud returned space to resume their true form, but not before confessing their love for Bobby. Once the new Defenders disbanded, Iceman, Beast, and Angel reunited with Cyclops and Jean Grey. Posing as humans, the original five X-Men created X-Factor, a group which operated under the pretense of hunting down suspected mutants, but secretly helped them. They also sometimes used their traditional costumed identities in outlaw activities, and were dubbed the X-Terminators. At one point, Bobby was abducted by the trickster god Loki, and used in a plot to control Jotunheim's frost giants. This scheme was ultimately foiled when Iceman was able to freeze the machine he was trapped in. That left him drained, but he escaped with help from the mighty Thor. But as a side effect of Loki's machinations, Iceman's power had been vastly enhanced. For a time, he was forced to wear an inhibitor belt to keep his abilities under control. 
His next ill-fated romance came when he pursued a mutant woman named Infectia. Beast tried to warn him not to do so, but Bobby didn't listen since Hank's intelligence had been affected by a virus. But it turns out Beast was right as Infectia's kiss turned her victims into monstrous servants. When she tried to do this to Bobby, Hank intervened and was changed back to his blue furry form as a result. Although he recovered and regained his intelligence, Bobby blamed himself for Hank's transformation and endeavored to be more thoughtful and mature. He also dated a Japanese woman named Opal Tanaka for a time, which is a whole other story, but suffice it to say that ultimately didn't work out either. He eventually gained enough control over his powers that he no longer needed his inhibitor belt, and the X-Factor members rejoined the X-Men proper. Bobby would later get a glimpse at his full potential after an encounter with the reality-warping mutant Mikhail Rasputin. Mikhail pushed Iceman's powers, forcing him to transform completely into a form of living organic ice. After that experience, Bobby experimented with his limits, pulling in moisture to add mass to his relatively small form. His powers were pushed even further when he was possessed by the mutant telepath Emma Frost. She soon relented control back to him, but Bobby was bothered by the fact that others seemed able to use his powers more effectively than he did. Meanwhile, his relationship with his father only got worse because of the old man's bigotry. After continuing his training, Bobby mastered the ability to transform fully into living ice, but during one battle he was grievously injured, leaving a large hole in his chest. He actually survived, but Fearing that he would be stuck in ice form forever, he confronted Emma Frost in the hopes that she could help him. He was initially terrified to do so, but she convinced him that he could heal himself by changing back to human form. There have been subsequent examples of Bobby being badly damaged while in ice form, but he has since displayed the ability to pull his molecules back together even after being completely melted. There have of course been many more adventures involving Iceman, and he has continued to own and improve his powers over the years. And in fact these days he's actually considered an Omega level mutant. Things continued, the events of the timeline unfolding, until finally Beast brought the original five X-Men forward in time to meet their future selves. And of course, as we discussed earlier, the younger time-displaced Bobby told the older, now present-day Bobby, that he was gay. Faced with the truth about himself from himself, Bobby also decided to come out of the closet and stop trying to be something he wasn't. Finally, when the younger Bobby returned to his own time, the older Bobby's memories of his time-displaced experiences were unlocked. After fully embracing his true self and becoming complete, Bobby Drake has become more powerful and confident than ever. While he may have originally been their youngest member, today he is one of the most experienced of the X-Men and continues to fight against the forces of evil, injustice, and bigotry. And that is the origin of Iceman. But that is all I've got for you this week, and if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, share the video, and subscribe for more Marvelous content. Be sure to leave a comment letting me know what Marvel hero or villain you'd like to hear about next, and as always, the issues referenced in this video are listed in the description below if you would like to read them for yourself, as well as links to other places you can find me including my Patreon page, where for only a dollar a month you can get your name in these special thanks here. So until next time, true believers, Excelsior!